Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Happy New Year to you, or rather happy uh, New Year's Eve to you. We're going to be going into a new year in about an hour or two. First of all, I want to say congratulations. You made it up into this far. And you know what? I'm so excited. I'm always excited, but I'm excited what the New Year holds for me, for my family. I'm excited for what uh, the New Year holds for you. And I want you to get this excitement going on you because enthusiasm causes things to happen. And you know, when you're enthusiastic and you're purposeful and purpose driven about what you want to do, something happens on the inside of you. And you know what I want you to do before we get started? I have to say this. I want you to like, subscribe, share this video, talk about this video. I want you to look at this video a few times because I want to encourage, I want to equip you, I want to empower you. Thus, the name of our ministry, Effective Living Ministry. Our goal is to help you live effectively within the perimeters of scripture so you can be a witness for God, a witness for your family. And in doing so, you can say what God has done. Well, somebody said, well, Mark, you don't need for God to do anything for you to uh, share the goodness of God. Well, you know what? I've always been taught that the proof is in the pudding is in the eating. If you got some proof about something, you know, something should always manifest in your life to show God is with you. And going into this new year, I want you to make it your business to uh, get a deeper depth, a greater relationship, a greater walk with God in the year to come. And in doing so, I want to encourage you, quickly encourage you about vision. I'm not even going to be long on this video. I want to give you a few encouraging scriptures because I believe scripture should always be your foundation. If you have scripture to stand on whatever you're believing God for, do you know God will answer? In the book of John, around the fifth chapter, it says, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hear us. And if he know we hear us, and if we know he hears us, then we know we have the confidence of the prayers that we petitioned him about. He will answer, in other words. So that being said, I want to give you three strategies three things to do based off scripture to help your new year become more prosperous. I know you're going to pray. I know you're going to read your word, but there are some natural principles you got to put into effect to make things expedite in your life. It's like the number one thing is vision. Many people never go anywhere because they don't have any vision. Imagine a plane or, or, or a boat set out to sail or fly somewhere and they have no vision. Don't you know they'll just be flying all over the road? And this is how some people are with their life, with their health, with their finances, with their relationships, with their marriage, with their job. Mentally, you got to have a vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says where there is no vision, the people perish or one translation say the people cast off restraint. So when you have vision, your vision is your guiding post. Your vision is what you strive for. You don't look to see what's going on currently in your life. I'm not saying ignore major things that happen, but your vision is what drives you. Your vision is what keeps you going. Your vision is why you wake up in the morning. Some of us have have faced tragedies in 2023. We have loved ones to depart from here. They transitioned on. Some was fired. Some got some bad news, whatever it may be. But my goal is this. My encouragement word to you is this. Keep going. Keep striving. My mom always said, what didn't kill you should make you stronger. That's right. So that being said, number one is have a vision for your life. Get some pencil and pad and begin to pen down and begin to write what you need or want to accomplish, which is our second point. And Habakkuk the second chapter, the second verse, God told the prophet, write the vision, write the revelation, make it plain on tablets or pen and paper so that he may run that readeth it. In other words, the vision, if somebody was running by at that time and they looked at the prophet's tablet, they should be able to read the vision. You need to write your vision down. There's something about writing and the hand connection. It gets in your heart. It gets in your inner man, in your spirit, and you can read it every day. You can remind yourself. It can get ingrained on your heart. And somebody said, Mark, I wrote it down. I confessed it. Well, you know what? You need some actions behind it because the scripture says faith without some corresponding action is dead all by itself. Miraculous things happen 
when you begin to talk, when you begin to speak, when you begin to envision, and then you begin to act, when you begin to write it down, something down on the inside make you want to respond. I know there comes a time where people say, I don't know what to do. Until you don't, until you find out what to do, you need to be envisioning. You need to be confessing. You need to be talking to yourself. Joshua 1 and 8 said, this book of the law should not depart out of your mouth, but you should meditate on it day and night observe to do all that is written according in it and you'll begin to make your way prosperous and have good success that's in regards to the will of god your family your finances your health meditate on what you need to do write it down and then begin to act on it. You know, sometimes acting is talking. Sometimes acting is getting up, getting ready to do what you feel you can't do at this time. The last example I want to give you in this area, I believe it's Romans, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse. It talked about Abraham. God promised him a child and it got so long to the point where Abraham was a hundred years old. Sarah was past the age of childbearing. That was his wife. And the scripture says, Abraham against hope, natural circumstances, believed in hope, God's promises, that he will become the father of many nations. And the Bible says the older he got, the more stronger he got because he said God was able to do what he promised. When you get the word of God on the inside of you, you find a promise in the Bible, stand on it. Don't be like one of these old, uh, this old professor I knew sometime back here, he didn't believe what he was teaching. He looked only in the natural. And when the natural looked bad, he was depressed. He was downtrodden. He snapped on people. You know what? I'm so glad God severed that relationship I have. I love the man dearly, but I can't stand being around pessimistic people. Uh, you know, if, if you're around friends in this new year and they're not going in your direction, start praying that God will give you some new friends. Put that on your prayer list, all right? Last point I want to make is 1663 of Proverbs, 16 chapter in the third verse. Verse. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. All right? That's what you need to do. Commit to God some plans this year. Say, God, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to spend 15 minutes of devotion. I'm going to spend 15 minutes reading some scripture. Seven minutes in the Old Testament, seven minutes in the New Testament. I'm going to get up and commit five to 10, 15 minutes, whatever you feel comfortable praying to God. And then I'm going to commit uh, at least one time a week. I ain't going to make you do it every day, but at least one time a week, learn a scripture, memorize a scripture. And in doing so, by the end of the year, you're going to have at least 52 scriptures memorized. And then when something happened in your life, you're going to be able to spiritually bring back, regurgitate a scripture to help you get through the trial, the test, whatever you may go through, because you're writing your vision. You're making it plain here. And then as you begin to look at your vision, you're going to run with it. And then you're committing all of these things to God and watch you do something miraculous. Listen, 2020. 24 is your year. Stop looking behind. Look forward to the things God is going to do. And some great things are going to happen. Listen, I'm going to stop right here. I'm Mark Holiday. That's your encouraging word. I will see you next year. God bless you.